Hey guys, Ivan here, and it's been a couple of days since the Arnold Classic finished, and in the meantime, we got a couple of very interesting statements from some bodybuilders who did this show in Classic and in the Open as well. We also got a couple of very interesting updates, some cool photos, and also a scorecard of this show, and we're gonna review all that in this video. So let's start first with a scorecard. And these results are pretty interesting to me, so I highlighted and underlined some of the interesting names and results here, so you guys can easier see what I'm trying to explain to you here. First, Samson Dauda, as you can see, perfect score. 5 points in the pre-judging, 5 points in the finals, total of 10 points, perfect score, everybody pretty much agreed that he is the winner, that was very interesting to me, so it wasn't really close between him and Nick, it was actually much closer between Nick and Andrew Jack, so I redlined those two names and the points, you can see it was 29 points for Andrew and Nick Walker had 21 points, so it was very close, that was an actual battle, it was between them, and based on both results and just visual impression based on the live stream and the videos and the photos, Nick improved in the finals and Andrew faded. Andrew was better in the pre-judging and Nick was worse in the pre-judging, but Nick was still winning, even though he was worse in the pre-judging than he was in the finals, he was still ahead of Andrew in terms of points, so obviously it was a battle between these two guys, but Nick won uh, pretty decisively, however it wasn't close between him and Samson, Samson won with a perfect score. The next battle was between Big Remy and Sean Clarida, as you can see that one was also very close and visually that was the impression that I got, Sean Clarida had a total of 49 points and Big Remy was 41, I underlined these two names in green so you can see them more clearly, uh, as you can see and as you probably saw uh, visually Big Remy improved in the finals but still he was winning even in the pre-judging, however as you can see based on points it was very close and I felt the same way, I wasn't sure who was gonna win, but I thought it might be Remy. Now, the next battle was, actually, as you can see, Sean versus William Bonac, it wasn't even close. I mean, Akeem and Bonac were kind of close, but Sean and Big Remy were quite a bit ahead of these two guys. And as far as Akeem and Bonac, also very close battle. Uh, as you can see, Akeem was a little bit better in the, in the pre-judging and Bonac improved in the finals, but still it was very close, however, Akeem won. It was weird to me, I didn't see it that way, but I guess the judges saw it differently. Then you had Patrick Moore and Kamal El Gargni, uh, 9th and last place, 10th place. This one was the closest for sure. As you can see, it was only a two-point difference and Patrick managed to win in the finals, but in total points, Kamal had two more points, and I also believe the pre-judging is, 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 is more valued than the, than the finals, so if you win the pre-judging and the other guy wins the finals, and the score is equal, the guy that won the pre-judging is gonna win, I believe that's how it's judged, I'm not so sure, but still, Kamal had those two extra points, and I thought it was very interesting that Justin Rodriguez wasn't really in conversation to lose against these two guys, I guess it's just the size size difference, the size is appreciated in this kind of contest, I didn't see it that way, I thought Patrick was better than both Kamal and Justin, but it is how it is. Alright, enough with the scorecard, now we're gonna move on to the actual statements of these bodybuilders that they made after the show, it is definitely more interesting to hear what the losers of the show had to say than the winners, because the winners would be, you know, just uh, grateful, thanking everybody, and saying everybody was awesome and stuff like that, and that's pretty boring, let's be honest, the losers might be salty, and that's what I want to see, and I think there is a little bit of that in this show, so there are losers in this show for sure, first loser would be Nick Walker, because he didn't win the show, and he was a former champion, and he was ahead of Samson at the Mr. Olympia, so he was kind of the favorite to win this show, but Samson pulled the win, so Nick is the first loser here, Andrew Jack is definitely not a loser, I mean, he placed ahead of Big Remy, William Bonek, Sean Clarida, I mean, this is a huge success for him, and he was battling against Nick Walker, it was a close battle, if he was a little bit fuller in the arms, and let's say if he was a little bit thicker in the hamstrings and the back, he would probably beat him, but that's what if, he didn't beat him, it was close, he looked awesome, so definitely a win for him, this show, the next loser, 
I would have to say would be Big Ramy because Big Ramy is two times Mr. Olympia champion. He came to this show looking for redemption. He wanted to win this show to prove that he is still in the game. And look at his back double bicep. It was so much improved. Most of his poses were so much better. He was overall much, much improved. And even like that, even though he was super conditioned, even though he was crazy improved, Almost all of the flaws were so much better, overall it was a much better version of him, he still didn't manage to win or to even place in the top 3, top 2, he was 4th, he almost lost to the tiny Sean Clarida, he almost got slayed by the giant slayer, but he didn't, he was 4th. I think this was a loss for him, in terms of how he looked compared to the Mr. Olympia, the former show, in that way it's a win, but overall, considering his career and his previous successes, it's, it's a loss for sure. Sean Clarida, definitely a huge success for him, the next loser would be also William Bonek, because he won this show two times, and this time around he actually placed a sixth. So that was, a, that was a pretty big loss for William Bonek. He, was, uh, he placed behind Akin Williams, so I'm sure he's not very happy. And I think probably the worst loser of this show is the guy that plays dead last, it's Patrick Moore. I think he didn't deserve that. I think, I think he, even though he was smaller, I think he deserved to place ahead of both Kamal and Justin Rodriguez. But the judges didn't see it that way. So let's take a look at what these guys actually had to say. Let's start first with Nick Walker. So this right here is the official one, the politically correct one. And there is another one on his stories that you may have missed. This one, he says, uh, we came in better than the O, improved in all areas, we wanted to improve on. I'm really happy with the package we brought, came up a little short, but you know how I do when I lose, I only come better. Great statement, uh, he's happy with the way he looked, he just didn't uh, want to lose, of course, and uh, he's gonna come better. Uh, did he really come in better? I don't know, I mean, maybe he was a little bit improved, but he was, I think because of his condition, uh, he was flatter and that really showed his lack of structure which is something he shouldn't go for he is the mutant he should go for that mutant freakiness for the crazy size for the crazy fullness when he's not crazy big and crazy full his flaws get exposed especially the ones with the shape and structure so maybe he improved but he didn't bring it to the stage the best way he could and that's why he lost if you ask me maybe if he was the way he was at the mr olympia I think he would have bigger chances of beating Samson, but still, I don't think that would happen, because when a guy with perfect structure, perfect symmetry, perfect shape, comes in big and full and conditioned, it's really hard to beat him, especially if you have major flaws with the structure and shape like Nick does. Now, the next one makes me wonder, is Nick Walker actually salty because he didn't win? He posted this story, actually he reposted it, he didn't write all this, but he did repost it. I mean, who doesn't read the stories when they repost them? I mean, I don't know, I never had to repost that many stories, but I'm sure he read it, I'm sure he saw what he reposted, and he still did it, he didn't ignore it, he wanted, wanted this to be out there on his stories, and the story says, this is why bodybuilding judging is BS. Uh, two far superior conditioned guys lose to a soft, water-holding loaf. I don't know if this is really how Nick Walker feels, it might be, I don't think he would write anything like this, I don't think so, but he did repost this, and it is very, very insulting towards Samson, I mean, this is really, really bad, so I don't know if he read it, I think he did, I think he's just pretending he didn't read it, he wanted this to be out there, I'm pretty sure, again, I don't know, um, I can see that he just reposted a story, but you guys can tell me, what do you think, did he read his story, I mean, it is up there, it is on his Instagram account, uh, I don't think he didn't read it, I really don't think so. Now, as far as Big Ramy, he posted a, a video of him posing with Arnold filming him and he says, glad to draw a smile on the legend's face and tags Arnold Schwarzenegger. But I mean, that's Big Ramy. What else could you expect from this guy? He is always super humble. He's never insulting anybody. He is always grateful for whatever he's done. Uh, he's always appreciative and he's always nice and kind. And you will never hear anything negative from Big Ramy. His coach, however, Chad Nichols, posted a couple of very, very good photos of Big Remy. Crazy lighting. It really made him look super duper dry, super peeled. And this was taken on Wednesday. 
Now I'm wondering why the hell didn't they post these photos prior to the show, why are they posting them now? It would make a build up to the show a whole lot more interesting, many channels like my own would make videos about these photos and would probably predict him winning the show based on these photos, even though he wouldn't win, it wouldn't affect the judges, it would make the show more interesting and now it's too late, I mean these photos are impressive but look at, listen to my voice. I am not, I'm not, I know what I saw on stage, I can't expect anything now because it's already done, so I don't know why they kept this um, hidden, they should have posted this when it was taken, on Wednesday, but it is what it is, as you can see he looked amazing, so basically based on this photos what we can conclude is that he was really conditioned, that he really brought it in terms of conditioning, I mean Big Grammy was kind of always known for missing the mark with conditioning, and lately he's always peeled. Conditioning is no longer the reason why Big Grammy keeps losing. Before it was like, if he if he gets the conditioning, he's gonna win everything, he's gonna win the, he's gonna win the Mr. Olympia, but now we can't say that anymore. Now it's if he fixes all the, all the trouble areas, if he fixes the lats, if he fixes the legs, if he fixes the uh, atrophy in his triceps, I don't know, stuff like that. And that's way harder to do, especially when you have been doing bodybuilding for so long and you are a little bit older bodybuilder. So yeah, I made a video about it and I still believe it. I think Big Grammy's career is at the very end and I think he should retire sometime soon, if not right now. These photos are looking awesome, he was a great addition to the Mr. Olympia and to the Arnold Classic, but for him, for his career, should he be happy with placing 4th at the Arnold and 6th at the Mr. Olympia or whatever? I don't think so, he's the former Mr. Olympia champion and he should know when to end his career before he, I don't know, places out of top 10 or something like that, so I think it's time right now. Andrew Jack, Andrew Jack, again, he's a winner of this show for sure. He could have easily placed ahead of Nick Walker, not as easily, but it was a battle. It wasn't a battle between Nick and Samson, like you saw. So he made a statement, basically he is happy. He says, game plan was executed awesome and tighter in pre-judging, slacked a bit in the finals, third place as deserved, and then he says that he's uh, taking a break now after a long 366 days of actively prepping and he will come back fresher, stronger, prettier, classier and better. So he's gonna take some time off finally, he has been prepping for a full year basically and he's done great, it was a really good year for him, I mean he did the Arnold Classic Amateur, he won that, he won Texas Pro, he won uh, British Arnold Classic, then he took 8th at the Mr. Olympia while being a little bit off, and then 3rd at the Arnold Classic Ohio, I think this was a really successful year for him, and now he's gonna take that very much needed time off to work on improving his thickness overall, especially those hamstrings and that back, and just to grow overall more size, and the next time he steps on stage, this guy is going to be one of the contenders to win the Mr. Olympia, I'm pretty sure, along with Samson Dauda. Sean Clarita as one of the winners of this show in my opinion is of course very happy what he has done, if you want you can stop and read his statement, it's nothing very interesting, but yeah, he, he he's happy of course as he should be. As far as Patrick Moore, he posted a video of himself doing a posing routine, so you can kind of get the idea in this higher quality video what was actually wrong with his physique, and it was conditioning, so as I was worried during the prep of the, of the Arnold Classic, I wasn't sure if he was gonna be in shape, because like he looked like he's gonna be 2-3 weeks out, but then at the very end he didn't look super sharp, so that was definitely one of the issues, and also like he needs more size. What he has is beautiful shape, small waist, stuff like that, but definitely needs more size and or more conditioning. He placed last at this show, so no way he can be happy with the result, but he says this was a special one, a 9 months post-operation, ruptured Achilles and a 7 week prep and he says that almost two years away from the stage and he felt amazing and he's gonna compete again actually in 12 weeks from now. How much improvements can he make in those 12 weeks? Probably not enough, I think he needs a proper year of a really hardcore off season to grow more muscle, then he can be competitive, but can he win a pro show and qualify for the Mr. Olympia? I think he can, he's done it before uh, with his shape and conditioning, but like to be one of the top guys, I think he's far away from that. 
And lastly, as far as classic physique, there is this photo that is surfacing around the internet that Urs Kalecinski posted. So apparently, five weeks before the Arnold Classic, he ended up in a hospital. Now, you're probably thinking it's because, I don't know, like he was dehydrated or he was doing something crazy with gear, but based on what he's saying, it's not that, he just had a bad food poisoning, which is really bad if it happens five days out of a show. I mean, you can't eat, you can't train, you can't do anything, really. So even like that, he still managed to look really good on that stage. In my classic physique uh, prejudging analysis video, I thought he was winning based on the live stream. In the live stream, you could see that he had prettier shape, that he had more classic lines, smaller waist, better retaper, but as soon as I was done making that video and I saw some high quality footage, I saw that like Ramon was definitely far ahead. He was definitely bigger, especially in the upper body, like he was way more complete in the upper body and he was probably even more conditioned. Urs had great legs, but even Ramon's separation in the legs was deeper, probably because he was fuller and he was just overall bigger and he was probably leaner. So he peaked better and he's just overall more complete, but then again Urs is like only 24 years old, there is still a long time before this guy peaks. He needs a good off-season to improve, especially those arms and like overall upper body, chest, back, shoulders, everything basically. So I hope he's gonna take some time off finally, he has been prepping for like 3 years non-stop and he really needs one really serious bulking off-season. Anyways guys, that's gonna do it for this post-Arnold Classic video, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did guys, please give this video a thumbs up and if you wanna see more videos like this, if you wanna support this channel, please subscribe. Thank you so much guys, all the best and bye bye.